What's good everyone, welcome to the Man of Dorks channel. I'm Mike and I'll be your Cantrip Advisor. On this episode of Cantrip Advisor, I'll take you through one of my more obscure decks. This is a recent build of mine that became an instant favorite and a deck I could never get myself to take apart. Our commander is Saseya Orochi Archmage, a flip commander from the Kamigawa block. I love these flip commanders from Kamigawa because it's almost like having an enchantment in the command zone. In this video, I'll show you what this deck is made of, how it works, and how to win with it. Let's dive in. Our commander is Saseya Orochi Archmage. For one and two green, she's a 2-3 snake monk creature with Reveal Your Hand. If you have seven or more land cards in your hand, flip Saseya. She flips into Saseya's Essence, which is a legendary enchantment that reads, whenever a land you control is tapped for mana, add an additional one mana of any type that land could produce for each other land you control with the same name as it. Basically, this means if we have six forests in play, they all tap for six mana each. As you can imagine, we need lands for this deck. That's why I run a total of 45 forests. It would be nice to ramp all of those onto the battlefield, but since Saseya cares about having seven lands in hand, we need to find ways to get them there. So instead of our ramp package, let's take a look at our land to hand package. First up, our one drops. Attune with Aether and Lay of the Land are one green to search a basic into our hand. Enter the Unknown has a creature explore, which almost half the time will put a land into our hand and it allows us to play an additional land this turn. This really comes in handy after we flip Saseya and have no need for lands in our hand. Next up are two drops. We have Rites of Spring, which for one and a green says discard any number of cards. Search your library for up to that many basic land cards, reveal those cards, put them into your hand, then shuffle. This card is so good at getting our hand filled with lands, but usually doesn't get us all the way up to seven because we have to cast this spell before discarding the cards. If it consistently got us to seven lands in hand, it would be our dork of the deck, but we'll get to that later on. Next, we have Elfheim Sanctuary. This allows us to skip our draw step if we choose and search a basic land into our hand. This card is an all-star in more decks than just this one. Fork in the Road finds two basic lands, one in our hand and one into the graveyard. And Winding Way says, choose creature or land. Reveal the top four cards of your library, put all cards of the chosen type revealed this way into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. And finally, Sylvan Ranger and Gate Creeper Vine are two drop creatures that put a land into our hand. Next are three drops. Obviously Cultivate makes our list. I tried to keep our ramp strictly lands into hand, but sometimes you have to put a land on the battlefield. Journey of Discovery says choose one. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Or you may play up to two additional lands this turn, and it has Entwine for two and a green. Typically, I only do this for the two lands into my hand, but if you've already flipped Saseya, you aren't going to worry about how much something costs to cast, and you'll probably pay six for two lands onto the battlefield untapped. Next, Gaia's Bounty searches two forests into our hand, and Yavamaya Elder and Wildfield Scarecrow can search two basic lands into our hand when they hit the graveyard. Yavamaya Elder can also draw us a card. And finally, our Dork of the Deck. Again, we find our Dork of the Deck in the ramp section of our deck tech. That's not surprising considering our deck is centered around lands and we run 45 forests. The Dork of the Deck is the card that takes the deck to a whole new level and the card that you hope to draw into each time. And that card is Sprouting Vines. For two and a green, this instant searches up a basic land into our hand, and it also has Storm, which means we get to copy this spell for each spell that's been cast before it this turn, not even just our spells. I've cast this spell at the end of an opponent's turn where they had six spells cast, and I was able to flip Saseya the next turn and win pretty soon after that. Now that we've gotten our seven lands into hand and we flipped Saseya, we want to start using those huge amounts of mana we can create. But before we do, I want to mention a small package that comes in handy. This is the additional land package. In this package, we'll find ways to get those seven lands in our hand onto the battlefield quickly. We've already mentioned Enter the Unknown, but that fits in this category too. Exploration is a one-drop enchantment that allows us to play an additional land on each turn. 
Sakura Tribe Scout can tap to put a land from our hand into play. Gaia's Touch allows us to play an additional land as long as it's a forest, and we can sacrifice it to add two green to our mana pool. And finally, my favorite, Mana Bond. For one green, this enchantment allows us to play any number of lands at the beginning of our end step. If we do, we must discard our hand, but typically we have a hand of seven cards with all of them being lands, so it won't matter if we have to discard. All right, now that we've got Sasea flipped and we have at least six lands on the battlefield equaling 36 mana, let's take a look at our battlefield value package and see what we can do with all that mana. The way I built this deck was centered around having activated abilities on board to use with Sasea's ability. I could have gone the big green stompy route or X spells, but I decided to include some of these cards instead. Jade Mage is a two drop two one that has pay two and a green, put a one one sapperling creature token into play. Similar to this is Ant Queen. For three and two green, this 5-5 five five lets us pay one and a green to create a 1-1 one one insect creature token. Hex Drinker is a one drop for a 1-1 one one with level up one. Once you pay eight mana into this, it becomes a 6-6 six six with protection from everything. That could all potentially happen in one turn after Sasea has been flipped. Wild Heart Invoker is a 4-3 that says pay eight. Target creature gets plus five, plus five, and trample until end of turn. Usually an activated ability with, with this cost would be enough to consider not even putting it in the deck. But if I have 8 lands on the battlefield, I can give a creature plus 40 plus 40 and trample. That's enough to knock out a player and make the other players wet themselves a little bit. Next up, Sands of Delirium can instantly knock a player out once it hits the battlefield. It costs 3 for an artifact that lets you pay X and mill target player X. Once again, if we have 8 lands, which is fewer than this deck tends to get out, we can mill one opponent for almost 60 cards the same turn we cast it. Nantuko Cultivator is 3 and a green for a 2-2 creature that allows us to discard any lands from our hand when it enters the battlefield. Then we can put that many plus 1 plus 1 counters on it and draw that many cards. This is perfect to play right after we flip Sasea. We then get a 9-9 Cultivator and draw a new fistful of cards. Next, and finally in our Battlefield value package, is our Infinite Mana combo. This card allows us to generate infinite mana after Sasea has been flipped. That card is Wake Root Elemental. For 4 and 2 green, we get a 5-5 five, five Elemental with an activated ability that says, Pay 5 green, untap target land you control. It becomes a 5-5 five, five Elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. Let's say we have 6 forests on the battlefield. With Wake Root Elemental, we tap 1 land to generate 6 green mana, using 5 of that to untap that same land, making it into a creature, with still 1 green mana floating. We then repeat this process infinitely and create as much mana as we want. This is why it's important to have activated abilities on the battlefield, because we need somewhere to dump our mana. Now after we've created all that mana, and have our battlefield value, how do we win? Well, let's take a look at our win con package and find out. Helix Pinnacle is one green for an enchantment with Shroud that reads, pay X, put X tower counters on Helix Pinnacle. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are 100 or more counters on Helix Pinnacle, you win the game. I've had games where I can put this up past 100 in one turn, but it's also great to turn one play to just slowly dump mana into. Next up is Walking Ballista. For XX, it's a 0-0 construct creature that reads, Walking Ballista enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Pay 4, put a counter on Walking Ballista, and remove a counter from it, it deals 1 damage to any target. If you have lots or infinite amounts of mana, this could instantly kill one opponent or the whole table. And finally, we have two token creators. Orochi Hatchery is an artifact that costs XX. It enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it, and you can pay 5 and tap it to create a 1-1 one, one green snake creature token for each charge counter on it. And Wolfbriar Elemental is a 4-drop four 4-4 four, four with multi-kicker for 1 green. When it enters the battlefield, we create a 2-2 two, two wolf creature token for each time it was kicked. With all the mana we have available to us, our board fills up pretty fast and can definitely threaten our opponent's life totals. Next, let's look at our removal package. Now, I'll admit, there's not too much spot removal or even board wipes in this deck, for two reasons. In mono green, we don't have access to as much removal as we'd like, and we want to stay focused on developing our own board and powering ahead of our opponents before they can even drop their threats. But for removal, we're running Beast Within, which destroys any permanent and gives the controller a 3-3 Beast token. 
We also run an old classic, Desert Twister, which is a six drop sorcery that destroys any permanent. And Bramble Crush is two and two green for a sorcery that destroys any non-creature permanent. And of course, I run Naturalize and Return to Nature to take care of artifacts and enchantments. Now, typically I would mention something about the lands we run in the deck, but this deck only runs forests and there's 45 of them. I decided not to put in any utility lands because I wanted all of my lands tapping for as much mana as possible. Now before we look at our mana value and card type spread, let me share my ideal opening hand with you. In my ideal hand, I would have four forests, our millery sphere, hex drinker, and seek the horizon. This way I have a turn one and turn two play with hex drinker and our millery sphere. That and Seek the Horizon will help me put lands into my hand, and Hex Drinker will help me establish a board presence. Hopefully we can draw into one or two lands along the way, as well as a bigger spell or something with an activated ability. This hand really sets us up for an early win. Finally, let's look at our spread of card types, our average mana value, and the overall cost. In this deck, we have 20 creatures, 10 artifacts, 8 enchantments, 14 sorceries, 4 instants, one Planeswalker, and 45 lands. Our mana value is so low in this deck. It averages at 2.49, which is about one less than the average EDH deck. This deck works quickly and has lots of versatility. Since this deck is filled with 45 lands, the price is relatively cheap. The entire deck is priced at $208.70. If you'd like to purchase this deck in its entirety, click the link in the description below. Also, while you're there, you'll find links to our website, our TCG Player Store, and our TCG Player Affiliate link in which you can purchase individual cards to benefit the show. If you'd like to support us directly, head over to our website and find our Patreon page and discover the perks that our Patreons get. We really appreciate all the support. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you liked the video and made it all the way to the end, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below any cards we may have missed or which commander you'd like to see featured next. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you later.